In this lesson, we'll take a brief look at elastic forces. You'll see more on this next term when you cover simple harmonic motion. Elastic forces are interesting because they change proportionately with displacement. That is either stretching or compressing. And we've all experienced this when we simply stretch an elastic band. We need to apply more force in order to stretch it further. And the elastic pulls back with an equal and opposite force, the spring constant or the spring force. If we apply a force F1 to stretch our spring by delta x, then we need to apply twice that in order to stretch it by 2 delta x. And so we see that proportional relationship coming out. And this proportionately changing force is also what makes springs so useful for spring scales. Because the amount of stretching is proportional to the force applied, we can calibrate the markings to enable us to use the displacement, a measured displacement, to determine the force being applied. So here is a simple example involving elastic forces. A light spring having a force constant of 125 newtons per meter is used to pull a 10 kilogram sled on a horizontal frictionless ice rink. If the sled has an acceleration of 2 meters per second squared, by how much does the spring stretch if it pulls on the sled A, horizontally, and B, up a 30 degree incline? And so I've adapted this from the version in the book, so you'll see a different solution for B. I've actually made it go up an incline. So in case A, let's start with our free body diagram and what we know. We know that there's going to be a normal force and a force due to gravity. We're applying a spring force that will give us an acceleration. And namely, we're going to have an acceleration. If we define this as our positive axis, an acceleration of a positive 2.00 meters per second squared. We have a mass of 10 kilograms and our spring constant is 125 newtons per meter. Let's look at the sum of our y components of the force. We've got a positive Fn, we've got a negative Fg because it's acting downward. So I've defined, just to be clear, I'm going to make this my positive y direction and this is going to be my positive x direction over here. I've got these two forces that would give me a y acceleration and in this case there's no acceleration in that direction. So that's equal to zero and in this case my normal force and my gravitational force are balancing. For the x components, I've got that spring force in the positive direction, so it's a positive f spring, and it is going to give me my acceleration along the x direction or the x component. And so quite simply I have 10 kilograms times a positive 2.00 meters per second squared or 20 newtons. And for a spring constant, or for a spring, I also know that it's related to its spring constant and the displacement. And so I can just rework that in order to um, determine my displacement. So I've got the 20 newtons from above, and I'm told that my spring constant is 125 newtons per meter. And so this gives me an answer of 0 0.160 meters. I'll notice that my newtons cancel. And I can rewrite that, in fact, as a 16.0 centimeters. Let's look at part B, then, where we now have it going up an incline. We're looking at an incline plane here where we've rotated our axes upward by 30 degrees. And so I've also then rotated this one over by 30 degrees. We have the usual force due to gravity, and it means it's going to have a y component. In this case, it's a negative fg because it's acting downward. It's along that side, adjacent side, so it's a cos theta. And we also have then our x component here. It's also in the negative direction, and it's a sine theta. 
Our normal force lies up here then. It's balancing out that y component of gravity. We're told that it's frictionless, so we have no friction component impeding the force as we try to accelerate it up the incline. But we do have our spring force that is acting to give us our acceleration. So just as we did before, we'll look at the y components with no acceleration. And so those two, the normal force is balancing out the y component of gravity. For the x components, we have the force of the spring in the positive direction, and we've got a negative component of the gravity, and that is what's giving me any acceleration in the x direction. And just like we saw with tension, the acceleration adds to the force needed to balance gravity, or in this case, the x component of the gravity. Plugging in values then, we have a 10 kilogram mass, we have a two meters per second squared acceleration, plus the component of gravity, bouncing out the component of gravity to get an answer of 69 kilograms meters per second squared, which we should recognize as 69 newtons. And lastly then, the displacement caused by that stretching of the spring, or that spring force, divided by the spring constant, leaves me with 69 newtons, where I, get a spring, where I have a spring constant of 125 newtons per meter, and therefore I'll get an answer of 0 0.552 meters, half a meter, or in other words, 55.2 centimeters. So more than three times the stretch that we had before because now we have to work against some of that gravitational pull. In both cases, I've got a delta x that is positive. That's what I expect based on the axes that I've defined and pulling it up the incline. I need to exert three times the force in order to pull it up the incline as opposed to on a flat surface because I have to work against that gravity. And it's frictionless, so I had nothing to include there or to work against in that case.